upon a time, um, Germany was at war with the rest of Europe, and they were trying to reinforce I feel like a their personal story. Yeah, maybe this is a personal story. I have There's a sordid <laughs> past, and they were trying to reinforce their colonies in Africa with supplies because mm-hmm. their navy couldn't get around the British navy. So they sent a zeppelin down full of supplies. Uh, it got as far as Sudan, but then codebreakers in Egypt managed to like hack the code. And they instead they sent orders to Zeppelin sending it back to Bulgaria, where it came from. Hmm. So as a result, the uh, Germans in Africa never got reinforced. Interesting. But they tried using um, Zeppelins. The, wait, the Germans tried to reinforce using Zeppelins? Yeah. That's what the story just was. No, yeah. I, but I mean, in response to their Zeppelins being turned around and, like, code breaking, that's how they decided to... You said they send Zeppelins to try yeah. and reinforce. But then some... The Sudanese or somebody cracked codes. Well, it was the British in Sudan. Yeah, cracked codes and had and sent them back around yeah. to Berlin, a la Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Naturally. And um, then the response to that was for Germans to try and reinforce the then. No, like, no, no. The reinforced Zeppelins was a summary of the story. Oh, I, I see. Not, a, not. I thought you were continuing the story, thing. and then, in like in response to their Zeppelins not getting there, they sent more Zeppelins. <laughs> How many times are you gonna keep making the same mistake not to, until I get it right? Not, to, not to uh, question the German war policy. No, I was gonna say because it seems to work most of the time. I was gonna say not to actually send the supplies that the original Zeppelins were meant to send, but I mean just to check and see what was going on, <laughs> like Zeppelin oversight on yeah. Zeppelin matters. That'd be a fun job, colonial Zeppelin oversight. Uh, why would that be fun? I think that would be my career. Like it seems like that it would be kind of boring. boring. No. Well, yes, but also no. It all seems like it'd be kind of dangerous. Weren't those things just death traps back in the day? Not really. Well, they're actually pretty safe, except for one very specific example that ruined it for everyone. No. Why were they? Well, then why was the Hindenburg so bad? Oh, because the U.S. wouldn't sell helium to Nazi Germany, so they had to use hydrogen, which blows up. You kind of made that sound like it was the, the, the <laughs> it was the U.S.'s fault for not selling it. It's like I don't know if we really blame them. Well. If, if, hypothetically speaking, if we had sold the Nazis helium, because mm-hmm. we, at least then, probably not anymore, but at that point in time in the 30s, we controlled the world's helium supply. Um, you know, if we had done that, then the Hindenburg, Hindenburg probably wouldn't have uh, blown up and caught on fire. So Zeppelin travel could have remained a thing. Um, but instead, by refusing to work with the Nazis, it ended Zeppelin travel. That's what happens when you refuse to work with the Nazis. You condemn a dangerous, archaic form of transportation. Not dangerous and not archaic if we hadn't... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's dangerous and archaic. Just look at the Hindenburg, and we don't do that it's anymore. It's a... That's the definition of dangerous and archaic. It blew up, and we don't use it. But you can't... <sighs> what? Well, it, it, just, it sounds like you're using the, hy- like the hypothetical case where we did work with them. Uh, In that case, it would not be dangerous and archaic. Oh, well, you don't know that for sure. Well, I can guess. Hmm. That's what historians do. Work with counterfactuals all day. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what I do. And if, not the exact opposite. If Oswald didn't shoot Kennedy, then someone else would have. Wait. The, yeah, the universe not, <laughs> would just correct for itself. It's not exactly how that works, but... Uh, I would have done it myself. No. So we're going to go get the uh, map to the Valley of the Jedi. Yes. Yeah, which is which a is guarded by place. these flying uh, hookworms. hookworms, gorgonites, noble archer. Yeah, I always thought it was weird that in this game the bad guy's name is sort of similar to my name. What's the bad guy's name? Jarek. Jarek. J e r e. Oh, I thought C. I thought you went with Kyle Katarn. I was like no. Jarek and Kyle Katarn are nothing alike. Actually, it was that reminds me. It was sort of a weird moment the other day, and was. Uh, at some shop that I actually go to kind of frequently. Mm-hmm. And the person... I was just, like, talking to the... the, the Barkeep. Guy, the guy <laughs> the guy who works there. Cause <laughs> the, the shop I go to a lot. The, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? Why are you using air quotes that they can't see? Oh, crap. Are you making me? Yeah, because, like, the shop I go to frequently, and then I said the barkeep, implying it's actually a bar that you go to <laughs> oh, frequently. I have, a, I have some sort of problem. Yeah. No. He's drinking right now. I'll have you know. Um... Yeah, we were just chatting up and stuff, and 
I told him my name and he kind of misheard it and he thought I said Jareth, as in uh, Jareth. Yeah, as in David Bowie's character from The Labyrinth. <laughs> I was like, wait, a... and I had a. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, so he said Jareth, and I went Jareth. He's like, yeah, like David Bowie. He's like. Wait, what? He's like, yeah, like the goblin, the leader of the goblin goblins. King. The goblin kings. I was like, no, my name is not... Uh... David Bowie. Yeah. I'm not named after the goblin king. That'd be kind of weird. Although... I don't have that hippie appearance that they named me after an 80s goblin king. Well, to be fair, like, if you could just say I am named after a goblin king, that would be pretty bad. Yeah. Well... You'd be best friends with Tolkien if but then, the But then you'd have to do things like apply for jobs. <laughs> You know, and, and, and well, your name uh, is not legally Jareth the Goblin King. <laughs> well, you not you wouldn't name it that much, just Jareth. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't Prince know. of the Land of Stench. <laughs> it's like a thing that would be funny if someone else was named it, but not me. Oh so. yeah. Like my plan of going to Comic Con dressed up as Hitler and locking all the Doctor Who cosplayers in the <laughs> in the auditorium. <laughs> Because, like, people ask what's going on. It's like, oh, there's a Hitler going around locking up all the Doctor Who cosplayers. Like, just, Why Doctor Who? I don't know. They're just because just ne- that's one group of cosplayers? That are easily recognizable. Oh. That's that kind are of against a we- the Reich. <laughs> that's, kind of a weird, that's kind of a weird thing to do. I don't know. It'd just, like, it'd just be really funny. Mm. Like, just for that situation to happen. I, I want it to happen, but I really don't want to have to dress up like Hitler and go to Comic-Con. <laughs> Although it would also be funny because people would be like, oh yeah, you're that, that one bad guy from that one comic. And I'd just be like, no, I'm Hitler. And then just walk away. I think what you mean to say is you want somebody else to do this. Mm-hmm. Because it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be funny if it'd be somebody hilarious. else did it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we need to get on Funny or Die because they can arrange these sorts of things. I don't even know what that is. Really? Yeah. It's uh, a sketch, like it's not like a sketch comedy team. Like everyone who like nowadays works on SNL and all that, they do like side work with Funny or Die. And they produce sketch comedy stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the Between Two Ferns thing with Zach Galifernakis. Uh, I don't know what that that's is. That's like one of the, well, participate in the culture you live in. No. Um, <laughs> I obviously don't live in that culture if I haven't even heard of it. No. But yeah, and I don't know. I don't own a TV. Most of their so videos are kind of, well, it's, it's the internet. Yeah. Most of their videos are kind of meh, but it's because like they're all really famous people. Yeah. Whoop! <laughs> Super run. By the way, that was not sped up, and like that was not a glitch in, in any sort of animation. There is a glitch. You were on, using force powers. Was a glitch on some? No, and no force powers. There's a glitch on some systems where like the animations are too fast when you move, but that was not it. <laughs> yes. Have you saved it all? Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, ever since I died, I've kind of been a little more cautious. <laughs> I know. It's the story of most people's lives. You think you're? Are you saying that most people die and then act more cautiously afterwards? You heard me. No. I don't think these guys are Tuscan Raiders because they don't. Well, are Tuscan Raiders the same thing as the the in Episode Four? The people who like are like and they yeah, the right on Banthas. Are they the same group? Because these guys don't look like it, but they sort of sound like them. I don't know. And then the sequel. Uh, when all the models are much more detailed, uh, I think this is a secret. Probably. Or it's a way to drown. <laughs> well, right. in and of itself, it's kind of a secret. Um, uh, in the in the sequel, when the models are much more well detailed, they do not look like um, Tuscan Raiders. Well, they're probably they not have like then. they have like dread tentacle hair. Hmm. And but they sound like Tuscan Raiders. I don't know. I don't remember if they're Star Wars is unimaginative. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't remember what uh, what movie they're from. But they, I think they're. Uh, oh, that's right. They're from Episode Six. In Episode Six, when they're doing Jabba's thing, mm-hmm. and like they have that little battle in the yeah. desert. Um, there gotta, are those. There are those guys. Well, you got to curve the bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that movie that had that? Uh, I don't know. Angelina Jolie. I don't know. I don't even remember it. Where's my, where's my thermal detonators to clear these mines? He's holding a thermal detonator. I know they made a video uh, game too out far. of it. A video game out of thermal detonators? No. Uh, well, yes. Okay. It's called Medal of Honor. No. Um, <laughs> gotcha. About the... Uh, they made a video game after the Curve the Bolt thing. No. Which sounds like it would be cool. No. Yeah. No. It doesn't, it doesn't really to me. I think no, no, I, it could I, be a cool I, I saw that movie. I didn't really. I never saw the movie. Oh, well, there's your problem. If you'd seen the movie, you would have known why. That's like, oh, that game was kind of. Or the movie was kind of bad. 
But anyways, these like, guys, these well, alien... Just uh, in concept, though, like... Oh, yeah, if somebody just told you the concept of the movie and nothing else. Yeah. But then if you saw it, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that. Did I press the correct button? Um, no, these alien guys, yeah, in episode six. I don't know, they're... One of them gets eaten by the sand monster. Mm-hmm. The Sarlacc. Yeah. I, they have tentacly dread hair and weird gray skin and, like, very wrinkled, weathered faces. Yeah, I just want to point out, look at the beautiful map detail here. <laughs> this, the rotating skybox. Yeah, uh, and just like that. Just, just stand right behind the exhaust of the jets. It's totally, it's totally fine. Do we have volumet- volumetric smoke on? <laughs> Two stars. Guess what that means? Time for force speed. And we're using it next level. Nice. Said, the Empire sure knows how to ruin a perfectly good city. My guess is your Palliate 8 is in that large house. The Imperials are guarding it like a fortress. Well, I think a visit's in order. Don't you? 